Hang and hang. Good job. First friend after, you know, uh, six months of age. Yeah. Can a dog be significantly helped in an hour? You're going to see if, in this video if that's possible. This dog freaks out when it sees other dogs. A year and a half old dog hasn't met a dog in a year. Why did I slow this down for you? Because the dog looks like a coyote. What does that tell us? It doesn't tell us a lot except that, like, how would you train a coyote? It'd be very difficult. And this dog moves like a coyote. So you're going to see him freak out at Prince right now. And it is a very visceral reaction. You're going to see the hair up in a minute. You're going to see a lot of things. I'm going to show you first how much this dog freaks out. Then I'm going to talk to you about some new concepts. Something that I'm going to call intrinsic triggers. Okay. And this might be the missing piece for you with your leash reactive or your reactive dog to think about it differently, to think about triggers differently. So triggers, everyone kind of goes, oh, my dog is triggered by dogs, triggered by people, triggered by cats. Well, there's other triggers that are different but are more important. The leash is a trigger. The owner is a trigger. The house is a trigger. A correction is a trigger. The fences are triggers. So the key is to separate, to separate and minimize all of these triggers and then bring them back one by one. And you're going to see that in, th that in this session. So this is no joke. This freak out is, is something serious. Viscerally, this dog is just losing its mind. Look at this. The dog can hurt itself, actually. On this cement, it's not thinking. I mean, the hair's up. That's visceral, right? The dog isn't trying to be this way. The dog just is this way. And so the next thing you're going to see is me separate the owner from the dog. Separate, do the intrinsic triggers. If you're interested in learning the basics of dog training and also how to get results with dogs like this, Sign up to become a professional dog trainer with the Beckman Coaching Program. I've given them, it's only been in uh, two months, I've given them 70 videos. We do lives every single week with me. They get community section, social media stuff. It's a wonderful program. So email beckmanventures at gmail.com. Now back to the video. Just like Prince is a trigger, the owner's a trigger. So we have to remove one of these triggers. This dog needs to be good with other dogs, so we're not gonna get rid of Prince or have Prince go super far away. We are gonna remove the owner. So I do something I don't do that much, but I, I've done many times, but I don't do it all the time, is I remove the owner. He's up in that office. You see those two, those barn doors? He's peeking out from behind. She thinks he is gone. So we're gonna remove him, then we're gonna bring him back in the mix. And we're going to see how much better this dog is. She is better. She is now on a leash. She is not perfect. So the owner being gone does not make her perfect, nor would I expect it to, but it does make her better. And then here's the first little sign of discipline. She goes, yeah, I'm going to get the muzzle off on you. And you can see right there, she kind of, she's looking at me. She's like, oh, who's this guy who gives me correction, does the butt flip, doesn't let me get the muzzle off. He's a different guy than my owner. So now I've got to obviously train the owner to give more corrections. You're going to see that later in the video. So discipline is a problem too. So how can some these concepts help you? And then we're going to bring Prince in, then we're going to bring the owner back in. We've got to fade him back in, fade, bring the trigger back. So how can this help you? Let's say you your dog freaks out at dogs at a restaurant. And you're like, well, the, le the other dog's a trigger when it walks by and the my dog's on a leash and my dog's sitting next to me. So there's three triggers, the dog, the leash, and you. You can't get rid of the leash. You can't tell people to leave. So the only trigger you can get rid of is you. So you can tie the dog off if there's a fence there. Tie the dog off, move your chair six feet away. I would go to the restaurant when it's not very busy. Look at her looking at me. She's like, oh, who's this guy? Who's this disciplined guy? This isn't my dad. No, but your dad will be here soon, but I have to do the work. All right, you're going to move six feet away. I need to give her some love. Her nervous system's high. She needs some love. So then you're going to move six feet away. You're, I, guarantee, I pretty much guarantee your dog is not going to freak out in another dog six feet away from you. Your dog's going to go, what are we doing? We're at Starbucks, and I usually lie on your foot, and now I'm six feet away. And your dog's going to be over there going, well, my mommy, my mommy. I want to be by my mommy. And you're just going to sit there and the, a dog is going to pass and your dog's going to not freak out. Then you're going to move a foot closer. Now their dog's going to freak out. Or your, now their dog's going to pass. Your dog won't freak out. Move a foot closer. Then you're going to get next to the dog. You're not going to let the dog lay on your foot. Then the dog is going to, another dog's going to pass. Your dog's going to be maybe 
10%. Now the dog is in a normal situation. You're holding the leash and the dog is going to, another dog's going to pass and your dog's going to freak out 50% less or no freak out. Now you're onto something. Okay. So then, then, and then if the dog freaks out, you go, okay, I'm moving away again, which is if you do it with timing, there is a operant aspect to that where the dog compared the two events. I freaked out of the dog and my mom left me, but mainly this is just removing the trigger, then you being the trigger, then bringing you back. So you got to, you got to think about leashes and fences and you and the home as triggers. Every, many people go, oh, dogs shouldn't meet at their own house. And that's, that's true. They go, oh, it was protection or because they're emboldened. Really just boil it down to the house is a trigger. You are a trigger. It's easier that way. Oh, it's, was it protection? Is it resource guarding? Are they emboldened? Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. You're a trigger. What do you do with triggers? You need to get the trigger away. Okay. If, if, if you're doing leash reactivity, you can't pass a dog three feet away. You got to pass a dog a hundred feet away, get that rehearsal, then, then 90 feet, then 80 feet, then 70 feet. Okay. You got to think of you and the house and the fence and the leash and really, by the way, the, as triggers, but, but, but the le the leash isn't the trigger. The way the leash touches the dog is the trigger. So that's why I say change it up. If you're on a normal collar, go to a gentle leader. If the gentle leader's not working, go to a, a front clip harness. If the harness isn't working, go to a normal collar. Ch collar. Change the stimulus. The, le I, I, the leash actually isn't a trigger. It's just easy for me to explain it that way. The way the leash moves on the dog and the way the dog feels the leash is actually the trigger. So now we have to bring the owner back. She, she's a different dog, right? Uh, partly because the, the corrections, partly because the owner's gone. So there's multiple reasons. But now we got to bring the owner back in the mix. The owner is back in the mix. Now one of the triggers is back. So what are the other triggers? The, what are the total triggers for this dog up to this point? It is the dog being Prince. It is the owner. And it seems to be Prince running. That would be the other one. There's three main triggers. The leash really isn't a trigger. You saw this dog freak out off leash. The place isn't a trigger. The fence really isn't a trigger, I don't believe. If that fence was not there, that run up you saw a few minutes ago would have been just as bad. Um, so we have three triggers. We're bringing one of them back. Now, my goal in these sessions, the dog's looking at its owner. It's not looking at Prince's behind. But one of my goals and I have failed generally if I don't achieve this with a dog like this, is to get this dog to smell the other dog. When a dog smells the behind of another dog, that is interest, that is to a degree friendship, and that is a big goal. A lot of dogs come out and they never play with a dog. Play is like the ultimate goal, but it is one that I cannot achieve every time. I can almost always achieve with a dog like this a smell of the other dog. So we're going to have Prince flip in a minute. That's kind of a smell in the air a little bit, but it's hard to read. I don't know where the dog's looking, but the behind smell is what we want. And I'm like, you're okay. Don't worry about it. Um, but there's really almost no interest in the dog. There's no freakouts. Okay, no freakouts is good. Is it because um, the owner is on the other side of the fence? Probably. Is it because of my corrections? Maybe. Oh, getting smelled. Look at Prince, he's so happy. Getting smelled is a good thing. The dog is not terribly comfortable. We do not want to overwhelm this dog right now. There is a time and a place to say, hey, you're fine. Prince is going to come up to you a little bit. You, you got to deal with it. Now Prince is off leash. Again, if listen, the Beckman coaching program, I talked to you about how to raise a helper dog and how to use a helper dog if you want to become a professional dog trainer. You got to have a dog like this, man. You got to have a dog that is not going to be all up in this dog's grill. The dog... Your helper dog has to know its job, and Prince knows that he doesn't want to overwhelm the dog. Now you're going to see a, a little freak out right here. Prince is going to come up, and he's going to be a good boy. I like that the dog's in the pool. When it's a little bit warm, these dogs can get too hot in their nervous system. It, it doesn't help their nervous system. So now Prince is going to say, I'm going to smell you. The dog's going to freak out. I want you to watch me a little bit, okay? Tell Prince to go, and calm, and I go, you're okay. You're fine. Don't worry about it. And then I'm like, come on. Come on. It's okay. You got to change your, your, um, okay. A little freak out. You can't hold a grudge. You can't freak out. You just have to remain calm and you have to act like nothing happened. If you act like that, that was a big deal, which it wasn't a dog saying, please get out of here to another dog is not a big deal. It's not nice. It's not a big deal though. So now, now the owner is the trigger. 
Okay. And he's a good owner, by the way. He's a great owner, but he is a force in this dog's life as many dogs like this, the owners are. He, he means something to the dog that we as people can't really understand uh, what owners mean to dogs. They are everything sometimes. They are the only thing sometimes. And in a person, this would be mental illness, okay? And in a dog, it is actually quite common. So we're bringing him back. Is, is, this, is th this dog, is she going to be as good? So now there's a big transfer, right? The leash is transferred to him. So what are we going to see? Are we going to see horribleness? We might. I don't really know. She might go, oh, I'm with this guy now, and I'm going to be terrible. But weirdly, we don't. We see similar to when I had the leash, not freak outs. Prince is also, remember I said Prince moving is a trigger. So you remember, it's about all about removing triggers, then bringing them back. So why didn't I just give him the leash and let Prince run around? Because the movement is a trigger. So we brought one trigger back him. We're going to reduce another trigger. That's why I'm holding Prince so he doesn't move. You got it. You can't go, all right, oh, here we go. Oh, there was a thought. Thought about smelling. This is my goal. I did not know at this point if I was going to get this. I'm going, she's just like, I mean, there, there's the behind, and there's the part that dogs want to smell, and she's saying, I still don't want to. I still don't want to. So, but guess what? I'm like, we'll, we'll stay here all freaking day. This is a big deal to smell another dog when you haven't, it's a meeting. Nothing else Dogs need to touch the other dog. That's a meeting. Even through a fence, kind of touching noses calmly is a meeting. He's kind of pulling her up. I'm probably telling her to pull up. You got to, you got to kind of, fo oh, and here we go. And this is where I was happy. Super duper happy. That's everything. It's a big deal. It's not everything. It's a big deal. It's a friendship. She now smelled a dog. She has a friend. That's a wonderful thing. So I believe that the three triggers are for this dog. They are the other dog, they are the owner, and they are the movement of the other dog. So we have now faded one of the triggers back into this dog's life, that is the owner. The next thing we have to test is the movement part of things. Now, for you guys who are in the BCP, Beckman Coaching Program, anyone who's using a helper dog, you have to give your help a dog a lot of love during these times. So you're going to see me get down and just let Prince and just, just, just sit with him and let him do his thing and give him kisses. I'll often go into my house. I cut it out of the videos all the time. I'll often go into the house and I will just sit there with him for a minute and I'll just let the client do whatever they're doing. And I'll just sit there and I'll just love on Prince and let him do his thing. So that's for anybody who uses a helper dog. Now we are going to do the movement trigger. And that's why I fling this gate open now, I don't want the dog to go crazy, so I just want to see what the dog would do. It wasn't that big a movement. She didn't freak out that bad when Prince ran down there. She, she chased him and went away from her owner, but she was also a little worried about where he is. Now the dog is off leash with another dog. Kind of a big deal. The muzzle is on, although you're going to see that muzzle just pop right off. But this is kind of a big deal. Um, we have a trigger in the mix. We have, actually, we have all three triggers in the mix, and that's why you're going to see something, you know, that isn't that great, but she's being, she's with another dog. She's around another dog. Now, if I were to do this different, you're going to see her pop the muzzle off here in a second. If I were to do this whole thing differently, I would have, see, pops the muzzle off, and I, I go, you can't hear it, but I go, no problem, guys, no problem. She gets a little worse, which is kind of weird for a year and a half old dog. The muzzle isn't a thing like most people think it's a thing and we'll attempt to bite and he goes back at her and she kind of goes at him no bites i go it's cool i go good boy princey no problem it was what it was it wasn't really good it wasn't really bad prince knew that she oh sits on the owner prince knew that she didn't mean a lot by it she just wanted him to get out of there that's why prince didn't get too mad at her she wasn't being jerky she was just saying to get out of here. She was being a little full of herself. So Prince knew not to do much to her. In a minute, you're going to hear me talk to the owner about the personality of this dog because watch what she does right now. So he's cruising around. Every time she gets near him, I say, walk away. Look it. She goes, oh, what's this black thing on the ground? Now, not that might seem like a small thing, but it's actually like not. Fake. So she's like, daddy, daddy, daddy. Oh my God. I need to be with him. 
she actually doesn't like need to be with you. She wants to be with you and there's a difference and that's important for you to understand so that when she runs up to you, you walk into her. When she jumps on you, you knee her. She doesn't need to be with you, she wants to be with yeah. you. Does that make sense? Yeah. There are dogs who, who, will, who will actually like go into a different state when they're away. Mm -hmm. I mean, she will, but then she goes, well, I feel like running over there and seeing him. I f what's, that, what's that black thing on the ground? That's my muzzle. Like, she'll leave you if there's a better option. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now meeting more dogs. We got her relatively good with Prince. She got a little bit of stood up to by Prince. She's gotten some correction. Now we got to train the owner and get her with more dogs. Train the owner, get the dog reactive dog with more dogs. And he's got to learn to correct. Now let's see if she is a different dog after this. Pretty good correction. Hey, it's one thing to be mean to Prince, a big, bold dog. It is another thing to be mean to that little, tiny, sweetest puppy in the world, okay? And you need to go through life and, and know the difference and say, yeah, I get freaking out at that Malmute that's staring at you. But no, there, there is never a situation for your dog to freak out at a nice dog. You got to start to change your mindset, some, some people. And the dog has to be, so he, he did exactly what I do, okay? I told him to do that. He gave corrections. He removed himself and her from the stimulus. And then he brought her back without holding a grudge and says, because you can't, you got to, the dog has to desensitize to other dogs in order to be better with other dogs. So you can't stay 10 feet away from the dog forever. And there happens to be a fence there. So we're going to use that fence as a safety measure. More dogs, seeing of more dogs, being with more dogs, more corrections. If this dog freaks out, that's, that's the game plan. That's what works. Be with them, get corrected, or make friends. You have two options. Or desensitize. Now it's bull terrier time. So if she gets mad at this bull terrier who's going to bark at her, I get it a little bit more. The correction's going to be a little bit less, but she's actually really good with him. Then she's going to meet him. It's just more dogs. If she's not great, little correction. If she is great, verbal praise. Desensitization, all positives. Little growl, but we don't correct little growls. We correct full-on jerky freakouts, and then, which that was not. Bring the bull terrier out in a minute. Now you're going to see, you can't really see it in the video, but her back right leg is gonna to start to shake a little bit. It's very noticeable to me towards the, in like about a minute, it starts to happen. That's when as a trainer or a dog owner, oh, wonderful. Second dog meeting, it's beautiful, it's all we want. It's a huge, giant, big deal. It fixes dogs many times. If nothing else, it's a big step forward. So sure, you have to end the session when, they're, when, they, when, they, when their nervous system gets too high. So I see it like right now or so, and then I say, okay, we're done. So this video was about the triggers, how to remove the triggers, even though it's difficult when it's you or a leash or a fence, and then bring them back in systematically. Hopefully this can help you. Hopefully you can take that, that system and understanding triggers and think about them a little bit differently and take that into your own life and help your dog. If this video has helped you, subscribe to my channel.